Hi, this is Scott Hanselman, and this is another Office tutorial. Check out the other ones if you haven't seen them on things like white space management, styles, and other kind of deep techniques into Office. A lot of people think that they understand how Word and Excel and things like that work, uh, but if you dig into it, they really don't. I'm going to take a look at forms today. I'm going to start with a form that my friend Amanda sent me. She had a lot of trouble with forms. She wanted to do a survey. She wanted to hand out a Word document, but she didn't want people typing in the Word document and messing it up. She wanted them to fill out these forms. And you you see these a lot. Uh, and I think that you see them a lot uh, with casual forms. You know, schools. I think we've all seen these from the local neighborhood association and things like that. Inevitably, what someone does is they'll uh, make some space here and they'll say, you know, type your name here, and then they just go underscore, 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 and they go, uh, and it's a mess. And then basically we, as the people who fill the forms out, have to go and do this action where we say, all right, February 12th, 2015, and then I got to figure I got to delete that. Well, do I underline this now? Because that looks cheesy. Do I fill the form out? Do I print it? Uh, it's just a mess. What you really want is a form. The thing is, though, are you a programmer then? Are you a developer now because you want to make a form? You have to ask yourself these questions. You can see with this form that my friend sent me, uh, we've got some confused grammar checker here because we've got spaces, uh, no space after the colon rather, no colon here. How do, you, how do you deal with a form like this? Well, here's how I would deal with it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on, as I always do, paragraph marks. Got to see what's going on here. You can see these don't line up, figure out what the goal is. Now, is the goal to make some lines? We're going to do this in two phases here. If the goal is to make some underscores, you can just make underscores, but you're going to have the same problems that we saw with the tab video. So let's try this. I'm just going to delete these, and I want to bring up my favorite tool, Karnak, here. All right, we're going to look at this two ways. First, do you just want lines? Now you notice here in the lower right hand corner I'm running Karnak, that's C-A-R-N-A-C. -A -A it's letting us all see my shortcut keys because I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. There's a couple ways to do this. First, I want to get rid of the lines that are already here. So I could go Control shift right arrow You see how I'm just moving around with Control and the arrows? I just want to remove that stuff. Okay? Now just as we saw before in the tabs video, I could select this, go to view, hit ruler, set a tab stop maybe around four, but I'm going to click this button here on the left. I'm going to set a right aligned tab stop. There we go. Click on four. All right. Now I'm going to hit tab on each of these. See how that automatically goes over to, but then I'm going to right click in here and say paragraph tabs, and I'm going to change that tab stop to include an underline set. Hit OK. Now I've got an underline that moves with my tab stop. So now I can pick this up. You see that? Now that's not really a form though. I just wanted to show you that tab stops can have a look and feel. So to be clear, right click, paragraph, tabs, once my tab stop is set, if I wanted to say dot, 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 I could. Then what's nice about that again, make that as long or as short as I want. But I'm going to undo that, control Z. You see me control Zing all of that? I'm going to put it all the way back the way it was. There's a whole stack of undos. We're going to create an actual form. Now first, we're in compatibility mode. You see up there in the title bar, that means that we're using an, we're opening an old Word document. You can see it's a DOC instead of a DOCX. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say convert here under the file menu. It says compatibility mode. So we'll hit convert and upgrade it to the new file format. Now this will only work for people who have uh, the newer versions of Word, but uh, if you don't have a version of Word since 2007, it is time for you to get uh, a new version. So I've updated, now you see it's a docx. Next, 
we want to make a form. I want to make it so if I click on the date there, I get a cool calendar drop down. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go here to the file menu. I'm going to go to options. I'm going to go to the customize ribbon section here. Now you see here, here are all the commands to pick from. And on the right here is the ribbon. Notice how developer is not checked. Well, we are going to become a developer. So we're going to click check and then OK. And now we have a new ribbon, the developer ribbon. This is where developers do stuff. And you are now a developer because you want to go into design mode and make a form. All right. So I can select this uh, under these underscores here. Remember these underscores? Or I could double click on it to select virtually everything there and delete that. But I could also delete all of the underscores in my entire thing because there's a lot of underscores here and they're all pretty much not what I want. So I'm going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a find and replace. But I'm going to do a wild card find and replace because here I've got like, I don't know, 10 or 15 and here I got like 40. I want to get rid of all of these. I want to get rid of every underscore. I could do it with an underscore and replace it with a space. But what I really want to do is find one or more underscore star. I'm going to say use wildcard. So I'm going to say look for all the underscores, one or more underscores, and get rid of them all. So there we go. So we just got rid of 888 underscores. So that saves us a little time. Now, of course, our stuff looks weird now. So let's see if we can fix that. So if I hover over these controls up here, I can see that I've got text boxes and pictures and, in fact, a date picker. So I click on that. Here it says, click here to enter a date. All right. And if I click here, I get a calendar drop down. Now, I don't necessarily like the formatting of that, but I can change that. Even more, I can click on that control and then hit properties. Okay. And within this, we can style that if we want to as well. So we can say, well, I want the format to look like this, my dates. And I want to use a standard style for text that's in there, like the default format or a heading or whatever I want. I could also give that a title. Okay. Now, if we go into design mode, we get a little bit more context. You can see the amount of space that that takes up, as well as the name of the field. So I'm going to come over here and just start putting in forms. Here's another date. I can fill it out later. Client's name. That looks like that's probably going to be a text box. Email. Text box. Address. Text box. Phone. Home, mobile, work. Now you might feel that this looks sloppy. You can organize this however you like. You could put these into columns. I'm using shift enter. It's totally up to you. For example, here, I could break it up like this. Or I could potentially put them into columns. It might, look, it might look a little bit weird, but remember, you're in design mode. When you click design mode off, things get a lot tidier. In the case of this double line one, I might force with a shift enter and have a little extra space there. Shift enter is a line break, while an enter is a paragraph mark. Paragraph marks include vertical spacing, while shift enters do not. So shift enter makes sense there, in case I wanted to add more spacing. In some instances, I might have a yes, no. I can do this as a checkbox, or if I wanted, as a dropdown. Within that dropdown, I click properties. We'll put in two items. We 
which we can then choose between. Remember again, we can use styles to format. So if I wanted to, I could make a new style and have answers be bold, perhaps. One of the important things about a form is to keep people from messing with your document. In this case, if I turn off paragraph marks, people can still goof up my document. What I really want to do is make it so they just answer the questions. That's called restricting editing. So I'm going to click on restrict editing and this brings this pane over here and I can click editing restriction. I'm going to limit people to only filling in forms. I can also do this individual section so I could say I only want these certain sections like the top part to be restricted while the end they could have free form text. Here I'll then say start enforcing protection, put in an optional password, and hit OK. Now notice this. They can only click in form areas. This means people that I give this document to can only fill out the forms. If I need to edit this again, I can click on restrict editing, stop protection, and then as the administrator, go and fix things up. Let's take a look at one other form. Here's another form inside of a template. First, I'll get out of compatibility mode. That'll give me access to the latest word features. Now, this is important. When I turn on paragraph marks, it's going to look scary. That's because tables work a certain way. That shows the end of a table cell. But you have to remember that there's paragraph mode on and off and there's also design mode. So when you've got design mode on and paragraph mode on, it's going to get pretty weird pretty quickly. For example, if I start adding checkboxes, you might feel that you've lost control of your document. Remember, turn off design mode, turn off paragraph mode, and you get control back, and it looks the way it's going to look. I use paragraph mode a lot, so I like to put that up in my quick menu. That way I can get to it from anywhere, so I don't have to keep switching over to home in order to get to my commonly used command. So now I can move quickly through this table. Got a few extra spaces here and there, but you can get a good rhythm and put together a decent looking form in a reasonable amount of time. You can also set defaults if you'd like. Creating forms can sometimes be tedious, but if you remember, these basic controls, switching back and forth through design mode, remembering that design mode with paragraph marks on is going to look pretty funny, but turning it off and then restricting editing can give you a decent looking form in a reasonable amount of time, and it shouldn't take really any more time than making any other Word document. So this is basic forms. If you're interested, we could go deeper into forms. Just let me know in the comments the kinds of videos you'd like to see. Thanks.